Today I'd like to talk about the great fly race. I don't recall where I first heard this problem. If anybody knows where it comes from, please let me know. So the idea is that you have three flies and a clock. The clock is not a modern digital clock, but a, an old fashioned analog clock with three hands. And it moves with perfect grace and smoothness. There's no jerkiness or anything like that. At midday, the three hands are all pointing up and on each of the hands there's a fly. On the hour hand I'll have a fly called H, on the minute hand I'll have a fly called M, and on the second hand I'll have a fly called S. Time starts to pass, the hands go round. The flies are very lazy and they stay on their own hands unless two hands cross, which of course happens quite a lot. And when the two hands cross, the flies step to the other hand. They exchange the hands on which they're sitting. And this process goes on and on and on until the three hands come together again for the first time, and that will be at midnight. The race is to see which, which of the flies has gone round the clock the most times. Or is it a tie? A three-way tie? Or maybe two, two flies tie for the win and uh, one is behind? What? So you need to work this out. First thought that most people have when they think about this problem is to make an enormous table, uh, keeping track of where all the flies are at each stage during the race. But this is not illuminating and it's extremely tedious. It could be done that way, but who would want to do it that way? There's a beautiful way of doing this problem, just by reasoning and hardly any calculation. So, I invite you to pause this video and go away and have a good think and see if you, work, you can work out what's going on. So the secret to understanding this problem is that it's actually much easier than it looks. I want you to consider what happens when one hand passes another. So this is before the pass. You have two, two hands and this is the fast hand and this is the slow hand which is being caught up. And let's say the flies on these hands at this moment are X and Y. Time passes, the fast hand goes past the slow hand and the two flies exchange the hands on which they are sitting. So what happens? Well, after the interaction, the slow hand because is, the, is the fast hand because it's now in front. And the fast hand is now the slow hand because it's still behind. And the fly that was on the fast hand is now on the slow hand. And the, the fly that was on the slow hand is now on the fast hand. So Y was ahead of X before the hands crossed. And Y is also ahead of X after the hands cross. There's no overtaking in this race. Those of you that uh, know about Formula One will know about the Monte Carlo Grand Prix, uh, a race where it's almost impossible to overtake. So these, uh, these flies are going round and round and one can never go past another. You can catch up with another, but you can't go past it. Since the fly S was in an early lead, no fly is ever gonna overtake S, so S is always gonna win, got to win. The fly on the slowest hand, H, it's never gonna overtake anybody. So that must come last. So all we have to think about now is whether these are outright victories and losses or whether there are ties involved. So now let's analyze the situation to see if there are any ties or not. So let's calculate the total number of revolutions performed by the hands. The hour hand will just go around once from midday to midnight. The minute hand travels 12 times faster. That will go around 12 times. And the second hand moves 60 times faster than the minute hand. So that will go around 720 times. So the total number of revolutions is going to be 733. We add those numbers up. I'll make a note up there. Now, you can see that this number is not a multiple of three, because this is a multiple of three, and this is a multiple of three, and that isn't. 
So this whole number, when you add it all up, can't be a multiple of three. Now, the flies, their total rotations, when you, when you add them up, must add up to 733. Um, and that eliminates the possibility that there's a three-way tie. Because if they'd all traveled round the clock the same number of times, you add up a number to itself with three, three copies of it, you get a multiple of three. So it's not a three-way tie. Another thing to observe is that because there's no overtaking in this race, the slowest fly can be no more than one lap, one rotation behind the fastest fly. If the gap were bigger than that, there would have have to be some overtaking involved. Right, so we're looking for three numbers and the difference between the largest and the smallest is at most one. It might be zero. Well, no, it can't be zero because that would mean a three-way tie and we've eliminated that. So the, the gap between the largest and the smallest is one and the three numbers have to add up to this. So let's see what they're at. The, the, the average fly will have done. Well, I would just divide this by three. So um, I can divide by three, can't I? If I divide that by three, I'll get 240. If I divide that by three, I'll get four. And if I divide that by three, I'll get a third. So the, that answer is 244 and a third. So the, the average fly makes this number of rotations. And the fastest fly and the slowest fly differ by one rotation. So that tells you that the slowest fly does this number of rotations and the fastest fly does that number of rotations. And so the middle fly, what are they gonna do? Well, the three numbers have to add up to 733. Five and four. I think this number is going to have to be 244 four. in order the sum of the three numbers is 733. And that does it. The winner, which we knew was S, has done 245 revolutions and is the outright winner. The slowest fly has done 244 rev rev revolutions, but they're not the outright loser because they're tying with the fly in the middle end. And that's that.